Hi everyone, this is your second video on graphing rational functions. If you are period 7, this video is due on Tuesday the 29th. If you're period 1, it's due Wednesday the 30th. You'll be using these notes in class, so make sure you are listening carefully and make sure you're writing the notes down because you're going to be using them in class. If you don't write these down, you're not going to be able to do the classwork that I'm going to give you. So these are going to um, allow me to avoid having to stand in class and do all these with you one by one. So, uh, let's get started here. The main goal is to graph by hand rational functions that are not just basic, basic shifts and stretches and shrinks. So, we already did basic shifts. That's whenever we moved left, right, up, or down, and we used our asymptotes to guide us. We already did stretching. That's if we had like 3 over x or 2 over x. Those made the graph farther from the asymptote than normal, so it would be like way down here. We also shrinked the graph as well. So that'd be like if I had 1 over 3x or 1 over 2x. That would be like if the graph went even closer, but not touching the asymptotes. Okay, so we practiced those in class and did some whiteboard practice. Not all rational functions, obviously not all of them are this simple. Some are much more complicated, and you can't just use left, right, up, down, closer, further. You have to use a different procedure to graph them. So here are the basic notes or the main notes for this. These are what we're going to use, these five steps for every rational function that's not just a basic transformation. First thing you're always going to want to do is get the vertical asymptote and the horizontal asymptote. The order of 1 and 2 doesn't really matter as long as you find them both. Vertical asymptote, we're always looking at the denominator and thinking what would make the denominator 0. So you could either set it equal to 0 and solve for that x value or just look at it and see. Sometimes it's very quick to pick it out. Whatever x value that is, you're going to put that dotted vertical line there to let people know that you cannot have that x value. It's out of the domain. And the vertical asymptote, again, is that x value that would make you divide by 0. The horizontal asymptote, there are three cases. I haven't told you these yet. Before, we were just tracing really far to the right and to the left to see where the grass, graph leveled off. That's obviously not the most efficient way. Here are the most efficient ways. Uh, three cases. You are going to need to have these cases memorized, but you'll be doing this so much, um, you probably won't have trouble memorizing these. If the degree of the denominator is greater than the degree of the numerator. Degree, you have to remember, degree is the greatest exponent of a polynomial. And remember, a rational function is just two polynomials divided. So what if I had something like this? Here, my degree in the denominator is greater than the degree in the numerator, so this case would apply. Horizontal asymptote will always be y equals 0. Okay, what about if the degree in the denominator is the same as the degree in the numerator? Then the horizontal asymptote is this. Now you might be wondering, what are a and b? Well, a is the leading coefficient of the numerator. b is the leading coefficient of the denominator. Let's modify this slightly. And what if my rational function was 2x squared over 3x squared plus 7? In this case, the degrees are the exact same. So you're going to take the leading coefficient of the numerator, the leading coefficient of the denominator, and just make a fraction out of it. So your horizontal asymptote would be 2 thirds. y equals 2 thirds. Now, what if the degree of the denominator is less than the degree of the numerator? That would be something like um, 2x plus 1 over 3x squared. That's a 2 right there. So here the degree of the denominator is less than the degree of the numerator. There's actually no horizontal asymptote. DNE doesn't exist. There's a other type of asymptote here. It's that slant asymptote. Uh, you're not responsible for that in this class, though. Step number three is to find the x-intercept. The x-intercept is going to help us plot uh, another point. For this, we're going to set the numerator equal to 0. Notice the similarity in this right here. The numerator tells you the x-intercept. The denominator tells you the vertical asymptote. Next step, make a table of values with at least three points so you can get an idea of what the graph does because you're not going to have enough points up to this point. Up to step three, you'll have one extra point. You're going to need way more than that because we don't, we're not a calculator. We need to know what's going on here. Last step is to connect your points, and you're going to use your asymptotes as a guide. So make sure you have all this written down, and let's do an example together here. All right, let's graph 4x plus 1 over 2x minus 4. I'm going to go right through the steps one by one here. Vertical asymptote, let's find out what makes the denominator equal 0. So I'm looking at it, and I can tell which one it is. But if you're not really sure, well, just set your denominator equal to 0. Oops, 2x equals 4. 
So x equals 2. That means at 2, we're going to have vertical asymptote. Step 2, horizontal asymptote. Let's look at our degrees here. Let's see, I have a degree of 1 in the numerator, a degree of 1 in the denominator. The degrees are equal. This is case 2. So I'm making a fraction of a over b, my leading coefficients, which happens to be 2. So I'm at y equals 2. So I have my dotted lines. Step number 3 is the x-intercept. I'm going to set my numerator equal to 0. So 4x plus 1 equals 0. 4x equals negative 1. x equals negative 1 fourth. So that means I'm right about there. You're going to be plotting a lot of fractions uh, when you do this. So get good at kind of estimating what's going on here. We need way more points because, look, I have one point here. I have no idea what the graph is doing. So I'm going to give you some points, and I want you, without a calculator, to figure out what values we have here. Let's do negative 1 and 1. Uh, we can't do 2 because there's a vertical asymptote. Let's do 3 and 4. Do not use a calculator here. Get fractions. It's good for your mental math. Pause the video, get those values, and plot them, and then come back. You should be back now. So you shouldn't have had too much trouble plugging these points into the x values right here and getting 1 half, negative 2.5, 13 over 2, which is 6.5, and 17 over 4, which is 4.25. So I just plotted them here. I got as close as I could to half and quarters. And you might be wondering, well, this still isn't enough info. I don't have no idea what the graph is doing. But we know what the asymptotes are. So we know that at the horizontal asymptote, the graph is going to get as close as it can to it and level off at it. And we know with the vertical asymptote, it can't go through it, so it's either going to shoot up or shoot down. So let's start connecting these points right here. At least we know it does this. And again, it's on a decreasing trend. It can't go through here. It can't go back here. If it went back this way, it wouldn't pass the vertical line test. So it's definitely not doing that. So it's safe to assume, without plotting a million more points here, that it's going down this way. And then let's continue it to the left here. So if you go to the left, it's going up, it's going up, it's going up. And here's this horizontal asymptote. Now you could plot a ton of more points here, but you know that all the graph's going to do is x gets smaller and smaller to negative infinity. Is this going to level off here? So just make it level off there. Same idea here. As you go to the right here, it's getting smaller. You can assume that it's going to level off at the horizontal asymptote without having to plot a ton more points. And as you go to the left here, it cannot cross the vertical asymptote because if you touch this vertical asymptote, that means you're dividing by zero. So I can't go any higher on my graph, but it's going to keep shooting up to infinity, y going to infinity, getting closer to x equals 2. All right, let's do one more example quick. Um, also note that my domain is x cannot be 2 here, or it's all real numbers except 2. And my range is y is not going to be 2. All right, next one. OK, for this, is, this example, same idea, but a slightly different function. What I want you to do is try doing the first four steps, or actually do the first three steps, and then come back. So pause the video and do that. Alrighty, so for the vertical asymptote, I'm looking at my denominator. I set my denominator equal to 0, and I got x equals 4. So where am I? 1, 2, 3, 4. I'm going to put a vertical asymptote there. The graph cannot touch this. Now let's do a vertical asymptote. So I looked at my degrees. I noticed that my degrees were the same because I have a degree of 1, a degree of 1. If the degrees are equal, you do the coefficients, the leading coefficients. That would be 2 over negative 1, which is negative 2. So I have y equals negative, whoa, negative 2. And then uh, I set my numerator equal to 0. So this thing equal to 0. And this is for step 3 is the x-intercept. I saw for x, and I got 2.5, or 5 over 2. So now we need uh, several more points here to get a feel of what's going on. I generally do two points on each, two or three points on each side of the vertical asymptote. So uh, let's try maybe doing 0 and 3. And then on the other side of the vertical asymptote, let's do 5 
and 7. So without using your calculator, I want you to fill this table in and plot the points. So pause the video now. All right, so check your points here. You shouldn't have needed a calculator when you do this. I'm going to try and get you to use the calculator as little as possible here. So uh, I plotted these. I got negative 5 fourths, 1, negative 5, and negative 3. So uh, let's use our asymptotes to help us connect these. I notice on the left-hand side of the vertical asymptote, as I go through these points, I'm increasing. I can't go through the asymptote, so my graph's going to keep shooting up, not touching it. And as I go to the left, as x gets smaller and smaller, so as x approaches negative infinity over here, it's going to level off. It's going to continue this decrease. It's going to level off at the HA, the horizontal asymptote. Right here on the right-hand side of the vertical asymptote, I'm increasing. Make sure you give it some bending. It's curving here, okay? And uh, to the right, it's going to keep increasing, but it can't go past that horizontal asymptote. So let's let it level off there. And as it goes to the left towards the vertical asymptote, well, it definitely can't touch it. So just make it keep shooting down. Y is going towards negative infinity here. All right, so we're uh, we will practice this in class next time I see you. Make sure you get the examples written down. And I'll see you soon.